Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer on part two of the line art and fill in separate layers. This time it's a little bit more advanced and I should have mentioned that in the first tutorial. It is not the easiest way to do line art and color. It is more of a technical hack to show that it is possible working with one source and give it different effects on the line art. For this, I created another version, this time starting with the outline, not with the filled image. So I have this red mage with basic shapes that have a white fill and a black outline. I kept the line art consistent, except for the tail, which already has a pressure brush setting for a more dynamic tail. But the rest is pretty straightforward, a rounded brush, set width for the stroke and you can see there is a curve assigned to the tail and a bigger stroke so that in the thinner parts it matches the other elements. On top of that I put black shadow layers, just shapes for darker parts within my figure and on top of that I have a layer with the detail lines, if I make that visible. For this I used two different sizes for the stroke, again trying to keep it as consistent as possible. One matching the outline of the bigger shapes and one being half that size for the tiny details. They both work with pressure curves, so they taper towards one end or towards both ends. I take this group of three layers and turn it into a symbol. At the moment the sync is turned on, I create a copy, so the copy is in sync with my original. I group that one because I want to add the blend mode and set it to multiply. In order to limit it, I apply the effect to the group, not the symbol itself, otherwise all instances of the symbol would be affected. I'll start the coloring in. In order to do that, I turn the sync off. Now the two instances of the symbol are no longer connected. I can make changes to one of them, in this case the color version. I turn off the line art and the shadows because I don't need them at the moment and just concentrate on my fills. For the coloring, I prepared a palette of different global colors in order to show you the nice effects of using globals when coloring in because we can change the colors quickly afterwards and they'll change throughout the document. I start by removing the strokes from all of these. They are not connected with the other symbols at the moment because the synchronizer is turned off and I can make changes to the fill and the stroke individually. I'm adding a gradient right away, again using the global color for the shading rather than the color that the gradient tool gives me right away, which would not be a global color, so if I make changes afterwards, it would not be changing accordingly. In order to speed things up, I copy the effect by a control shift V to the other objects. That way I do one gradient once and copy it to the destination shape. Once I colored all the shapes, I make the line art visible again. Remember, it's the same symbol using the same shapes. They just have different fill and stroke properties. By turning the sync back on, I can show you by making changes to, say, the amulet. I select that, 
select the line art and the shape and I scale it up and scale it down, move it around and it moves even though we should just have the line art selected but seeing it's a symbol the color version of the same shapes gets moved as well. I can also make changes to the note level of the shapes, I can change the curves add more notes, remove notes. It works fine as long as you keep the synchronize on when making changes like moving notes or adding and removing objects from the symbol. Once the synchronize is off and you do that, it will break the synchronizing because then the two versions are no longer identical. And that's where the whole process becomes a little complicated. You have to keep an eye on the synchronization. If you do that, you can create cool effects with that. And one of them is the next step. We will create shaded line art, which is a little tricky if you don't want to convert the line art by expanding the stroke and make it a shape rather than a stroke. And it definitely means that you have a lot more layers to edit if you want to make changes later on. So working with the same symbol, I make a new layer that will be named and move below this new duplicate of the symbol. And the symbol itself will be used as a mask to below. Seeing there's nothing in the layer, we get the previous view with the color and the line art. But as soon as I add something inside, and in this case I put another layer inside so I can set the blend mode to lighter color, which means only colors that are lighter will be displayed. And I create a simple circle. It is the dark red of my global colors and I place it on the line art. It will color that part of the line art. It is lighter than the black but darker than the original cap. By using that we can just color the line art. It is not ideal. It is again as I said earlier a hack to do it but it is a lot faster than converting everything to curves and having to edit things later on. Here I can still make edits to my original line art and all my symbols will be updated as I go along. To give me a bit more softness in the shading I blurred the circles and gave them a transparent gradient and then it's a matter of copying and pasting into places where you want softer colors on the line art. And here you can see if I take the pink, it is lighter than the purple and it will cover the purple completely. If I take the dark purple, it will just cover the line art. You can see the difference when I turn the layer off. I could have done the shading with a pixel layer and used a brush in the pixel persona to paint those elements. The disadvantage is that the global colors don't work once they are on a pixel layer, they just work on vector shapes. So let me show you how this whole pans out with the global color. I check the symbol and it is still set to synchronize. And if I go in now and take, for example, the cap, the cap uses the two red tones. Using the gradient tool, I select the end point, which is the darker red. I right click on the red and change that color to say green. It changes the shading in the top where the folds are to that green as well. So if I use a green for both ends of my gradient, you can see that it affects the fill as well as the shading on the line art, which is now also a green turn, which is the darker green that we changed the dark red to. So if I go in and say, okay, um, I want a different color, maybe the blue that matches the background might be nicer. I go in and change those two global colors and every other object that uses them will be updated.
that includes the vector shape with the blue in the line art shading layer. So we can easily change multiple objects with global colors. It is a hack, it's a little tricky, but definitely worth looking into if you do a lot of line art work, character design with different coloring and shading of your lines. Play around with it, see if it works for you. Again, keep in mind that synchronizing needs to be turned on and off and you gotta be careful not to mess that one up. Save often, save different versions, and remember that undo is your friend. I hope you learned something new in this tutorial. If you did, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, look at my blog, let me know what you want to see next, and I will see you again soon.